Okay, what we need all you guys to do is look directly into this light, okay? It's very important you look directly into the light, okay? And... Boy, the shades are fly, though. How do you think I'd look in those? Bet you didn't know this took place in the same universe as Men in Black. Y'all, this is Todd Foolery, and I want to take a moment to yet again praise 90s Nickelodeon. If you've seen my video about the journey of Alan Strange, shameless plug for a previous video here, you know the 90s was packed with shows that completely transformed kids' television. But this time, I'm not just talking about diverse representation. There has never, and I mean never, been another network with the most memorable theme songs, and I am willing to fight you on this. Rugrats, Doug, Clarissa Explains It All, The Secret World of Alex Mack, all that, Kenan and Kel. Even the Animorphs theme song was a banger. It's all in your hands. But I gotta be real with you. No other theme song gets me like Cousin Skeeter. Written by Missy Elliott, performed by 702, and shot like a Mace music video? It's a bop. Now, you know how he does. You know Skeeter flows. So let's start talking about this popular 90s kids show. <sighs> There's gonna be a lot of that. <laughs> Before we get started, thank you so much for watching. I release new videos weekly and I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so I need your help. <laughs> Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, then hit that notification bell to see more videos like this one. Last thing, if there are any other 90s kids shows you're just burning for someone to revisit, I got a list going. So drop all your recommendations down in the comment section below. Now take a journey with me. Don't be late, we're going all the way back to 1998. Sorry. While the secret world of Alex Mack and the mystery files of Shelby Woo were coming to an end, shows like Animorphs, The Wild Thornberries, and Cousin Skeeter were just getting started, joining other classics like All That, Hey Arnold, and Keenan and Kel, who I was shocked to see during a crossover episode, but we'll get there. Now, if you don't remember, Cousin Skeeter was a black sitcom starring Skeeter, a fast-talking puppet with a short man's complex from Atlanta who's always running his mouth, burping so loud it rocks all of New York City, and getting his cousin Bobby into trouble he must then also get them out of. The Walker family includes Bobby, his music producer father Andre, and his lawyer mother Vanessa. The show also features Nina Jones, Bobby's talkative neighbor and crush throughout the series, as well as another puppet, Nicole. Cole, who gets introduced towards the end of the show's run as a love interest for Skeeter. Cousin Skeeter premiered on September 1st and ran for three seasons, concluding on March 11th, 2001, with a total of 52 episodes. While I was able to only find and watch 26 of those 52, believe me, that was plenty! The show was created by Phil Bowman, most known for his parody movies like Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood, Not Another Teen Movie, and Scary Movies 1-4, through 4, Alonzo Brown, who also wrote Honey, and Brian Roberts, known for all of these. The cast includes Bill Bellamy as Skeeter, Robert Richard as Bobby, Megan Good as Nina, Rondell Sheridan as Andre, Angela Means as Vanessa, and Tisha Campbell as Nicole. A lot of these names should sound familiar, and we'll do a quick Where Are They Now towards the end, but first, we need to talk about this show. Y'all, Cousin Skeeter is wild. And I'm not just talking about his catchphrase. Wow, wow, wow. There were countless times I had to ask myself, what the f is happening? <laughs> now, there are a lot of things that work and still hold up great. And then there's a lot that doesn't. So what we're gonna do is make ourselves a little positivity sandwich, okay? I'm gonna talk about some of the good stuff and then some really bad stuff here in the middle, only to close it out with some more good stuff. Got it? Great. Let's get on the case like Chevy Chase. Hey, you guys, guess what? Don't even try. You guys will never guess. I mean, I'm so excited and I'm so happy and it's kind of an honor and everything. I know you guys will be just as happy for me as I am for myself, right? Girl, you ever plan on bringing this aircraft in for a landing? While each episode is narrated by Bobby trying to convince you that he's the main character, it's definitely Skeeter that runs the show. I wasn't actually sure what to expect because I haven't watched this show since I was like 11. But one thing I really got a hand to the creative team, they set up the tone right off the bat with Skeeter. Skeeter's first scene going from being a passenger on a plane to New York City to being in the cockpit flying the plane to New York City, throwing any sense of logic or realism completely out of the window. And because of that, surprisingly, the extremely wild and outrageous humor just works. And I'm talking Skeeter constantly being flung across the room with his signature, I'm okay, to him being sucked into a vacuum or launched into space, which 
Yeah, there's a Cousin Skeeter movie where Skeeter, Bobby, Nina, and Nicole get lost in space, find themselves on an alien planet, only to return home to be neuralized by FBI agents. The show doesn't take itself too seriously, and I think that was a brilliant choice for its target demographic. Children! And as obnoxious and extra as Skeeter is, and I mean like, so extra, he's also charming and i can see how little 11 year old todd lee was so captivated by this black puppet there's literally never a dull moment and there's just something so entertaining and fun about watching this little puppet bounce around back and forth on the screen i also think the show would not have been as popular without bill bellamy who was a brilliant choice at the time as a popular comedian in the 90s credited for creating the phrase booty call which is wild to think about and running off the success of love jones and how to be a player wait why did they cast this guy to star in a kids television show anyway bellamy knows comedy and comedic timing not to mention the voice he chose for skeeter just fits perfectly and it's obvious they let him riff and freestyle some of his lines because his jokes are the only ones that genuinely hit season one in my opinion is definitely the strongest despite skeeter's terrible taper fade it's during this time i feel they really focus on black culture with small things like bobby being from englewood or skeeter being from atlanta there's also a christmas episode where nina dresses up in traditional kwanzaa attire and i think that's great as well as inclusive i also enjoy their portrayal of a black family with bobby's parents not only being happily married but successful within their careers nina is an insanely mature Sure, like typical portrayals of black girls. He's just a kid that talks a lot. Skeeter is even portrayed as intelligent and really good with math, despite his wild personality and knack for getting everyone into trouble. Now that said, the show completely loses me a couple episodes into season two, even though they thankfully fix Skeeter's fate. It's during this point I realized the show is really becoming a live action cartoon. And while that works wonderfully with Skeeter, it just doesn't translate so well to the rest of the human characters. And let me elaborate this in the feelings part of this positivity sandwich. <laughs> While Skeeter is the ace in the place of the whole human race, it's the rest of the characters I found a little bit unbearable in this lack of logic, unrealistic cartoony world. Except Nina. Nina was great 75% of the time and she actually felt like a developed character. Bobby on the other hand felt like a generic boy. Not that smart, not that popular, no real interest or hobbies other than baseball and I suppose that was the contrast Skeeter's tomfoolery but it felt a bit too grounded in this cartoon like world. Plus most of his dialogue was just whatever the opposite of what Skeeter said or jokes that fell flat because well, Robert Richard was a kid and didn't have the same comedy chops as Bellamy. It also felt like the cast wasn't given much direction, and most of the adults suffered from the whole grown-ups are stupid syndrome of typical 90s kids television. It also felt like they went with the first take of every scene, case in point. And I got an ironclad contract to prove it. I had to play this scene several times to realize this man said, Iron Glad contract. Glad instead of ironclad. People, just reset and do another take. And while it's made very clear the show isn't grounded in reality, the storytelling is just all over the place and very confusing. They go from Bobby running for class president in one episode, which was actually quite entertaining, to being trapped on a school bus speed style because Skeeter gives a bus driver allergic to coconut a piece of cake with coconut in it, and when the driver passes out at the wheel, He's too overweight for them to lift his foot off the gas pedal, so it turns into this big ordeal that involves the cops and then the kids having to be airlifted off of the bus. I kid you not, this is the plot of the sixth episode of the second season. And remember my video about the secret world of Alex Mack? No? Watch it here. <laughs> anyway, in that video, I mentioned how Alex constantly makes mistakes but owns up to them, so you get some sense of development or character growth by the time the episode ends. Well. In Cousin Skeeter, they don't own up to anything. <laughs> the message usually revolves around keep lying and scheming so you don't get caught. But if you do get caught, just lie your way out of that too. That's not really a message you want to keep delivering to preteens on a week-to-week -week basis, people. Oh, and remember that Keenan and Kel crossover? 
Yeah, well, as exciting and nostalgic it was to see them again, that episode really didn't work. And that's because both shows weren't grounded in the same sense of reality. They tried to have Kel match that cousin Skeeter humor, but having a human flying across the screen just isn't as effective as a puppet being flung into a wall and saying, I'm okay. I'm okay. And Keenan was just made out to be an idiotic asshole and a bit sexist. Now, did I care about any of this as a kid? Of course not. Each episode, I was as happy as a billy goat on Tuesday. Or whatever night the show aired. That being said, it is strictly a show for kids, and there is not much in this for adults, but maybe some of the guest stars and possibly the music. Which leads me to the last slice of bread in our positivity sandwich. You don't want to overdo it. Who's going out on that stage, girl? You are me! My mascara brush! Please. As Skeeter is a quick-witted, free-flowing, constantly rhyming, aspiring musician slash performer, even going as far as dressing up as a girl to audition for an opening in his favorite girl group, music ties into the plot on several occasions and I enjoyed that a lot. So not only does a theme song slap, there are also quite a few performances that nearly had me forget how bad the dialogue was. I also want to recognize the creative team responsible for the production design and puppetry. Drew Massey, the puppeteer behind Skeeter, was fantastic fantastic and is actually still active as of 2021. Still puppeteering and voice acting for a ton of various shows and movies since Cousin Skeeter's finale. He and the production team got real creative with how Skeeter interacted with the human cast and like I said the physical comedy worked so well because they knew exactly what the show was and even played into it on multiple occasions. The show also did some ambitious things without resorting to CGI. While that new Kids on the Planet movie was absolutely bonkers. The set design, costuming, and practical effects were incredibly impressive. I also love that they used miniatures for the space scenes, but also built out full sets to portray this alien planet, and I can only imagine how much time, money, and effort went into bringing all of that to life. Aside from that, Kenan and Kel weren't the only guest stars that appeared on the show. Other big names such as MC Light, Usher, Tommy Davidson, Shaq, and Sherman Hemsley appeared, and that was amazing to see. Even Tisha Campbell, who was coming off that Martin fame, appeared as a guest star before returning as a series regular voicing Nicole. Not to mention this was one of Nick Cannon's first writing credits and it's just really cool to see the show featuring such predominant black talent of the 90s. On an adjacent topic, it was great seeing rising stars like Regan Gomez Preston, Megan Good, Robert Richard, and the future That's So Raven father Rondell Sheridan for the first time. In fact, with the exception of Angela Means who played Vanessa Walker, everyone went on to have incredibly successful careers. Bill Bellamy is still currently acting with his most notable roles being from Meet the Browns, Mr. Box Office, and Insecure. Robert Richard is also still active today, having become a series regular on one-on-one -on -one immediately after Cousin Skeeter ended, then appeared in countless shows and movies like Coach Carter, House of Wax, The Vampire Diaries, and most recently The Rich and the Ruthless. Rondell Sheridan, like I mentioned, is probably most recognized from his role as Raven's father on That's So Raven and its spinoff Cory in the House, but he's also still getting roles today. And honestly, if you haven't seen or heard of Megan Good or Tisha Campbell, You've been living under a rock, but they're both still very active today as well and probably became the most well-known of the bunch. Megan Good appearing on shows like My Wife and Kids, Deception, The Prodigal Son, while also appearing in movies like Deliver Us from Eva, Think Like a Man, and Shazam. Then Tisha Campbell, really owning the TV space, also starred in My Wife and Kids, but in addition, appeared in popular shows like All of Us, Everybody Hates Chris, and The Bold and the Beautiful. She even voices a character on the most recent Harley Quinn cartoon. So while Cousin Skeeter may have been a minor pit stop a couple celebrities guest starred on, it was also a launching pad for many other careers and despite the show not completely holding up in my eyes and thinking it might have been way more effective as an animated series, it still does hold a precious spot in little Todd's heart. But honestly, one rewatch was enough, and I'll probably never watch another episode again, but if you intend on revisiting the show, all I suggest is turning on your kid mentality, throwing all logic out of the window, and just accepting awful dialogue. You'll definitely enjoy it much more that way. 
All right, thanks so much for watching everyone. I had a really great time writing the script and filming this video, so I hope you enjoyed this Cousin Skeeter retrospective. Let me know if you watched the show when you were a kid and give me your thoughts in the comment section down below. A super special thank you to these amazing supporters here, and if you'd like to be featured in my videos and support future projects, you can find me on these apps here where even a dollar makes my heart do a little backflip and I get the opportunity to keep making videos about the 90s television I love. Just a heads up, my next video will be part two of my Alex Mack retrospective. Then I'll be revisiting the famous Jet Jackson, So Weird, My Brother and Me, and just anything that comes to mind or gets suggested by one of you. In the meantime, feel free to stick around, you know, click some buttons, and then check out the rest of my videos here. Go ahead and follow me on social, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really helps me out. Then subscribe with a side of notification bell. Until next time. Shine on, ya crazy diamonds.